All right, well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And this week we are looking at the greatest verses in the Bible in reference to our thinking, our minds, our hearts, how it affects the way we live. We've been looking at these scriptures from Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We looked at Paul saying, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and then Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 saying, take every thought captive. You have to take it down. There has to be some force involved in this. You have a responsibility in this. And today we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 8. You know, I believe in winning the battle of the mind. You know, uh, it's an old sports phrase, but I love it. You know, the, the best defense is a good offense. The best defense is a good offense. And I'm going to tell you something. This book, the Bible, Christianity, the new covenant, what Jesus has in mind for you and I, for all of his disciples, is not a, you know, don't do religion. It's not, I don't do this, you know. I don't do that. I don't do this. That should not be the definition behind what it means to be a Christian. Well, I'm a Christian because I don't do. That's not what Christianity is about. It's about what we do do right? It's not about no, no, no. It's about no, no, no. It's about learning. The prophet, what Hosea said, said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You know, they're talking about all this foolishness. Most of the Old Testament prophets were one prophet amongst many prophets, and they were the only one actually speaking the truth of God. So many of the other prophets, which the Old Testament calls false prophets, were speaking the wrong things. You see, but Paul here is not just telling us what not to do, but he's telling us what to do. We looked, he said, take the thoughts captive. Take them captive. Be offensive with that. And here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, finally, my brethren, and I thought it was perfect to end with this because Paul says, finally, after all that we've looked at, finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, not what you think are true, but what's actually true, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, right? High thinking, good thinking, wise thinking, honorable thinking. Whatever things are just, justice. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure. Don't think impure thoughts. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, he says, meditate, Mark that word, Philippians 4, 8, meditate on these things. Think upon these things. The words are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, and good report, and virtue, and praiseworthy. He says, think on these things. Make a choice. You know, we live in this age where somehow, I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know where it started. I think, I think we could probably chase it, chase, uh, trace it back pretty far back in history to, I don't know, maybe Genesis with Adam and Eve in the garden when Satan came to Eve and said, did God indeed say you shouldn't eat from that tree? Did, is that exactly what he said? He, he got into her thinking. He got into our thinking. He got us to begin to question God's word, what he clearly said. Is that really knowable? Are we sure the Bible is God's word and wasn't written by man? Are you sure that Jesus died for your sins? Are you sure that there's an afterlife? Are you sure that sin is bad? Are you sure that God loves you, you know, the list goes on. This is what he does. He sows doubt. He sows doubt. You know, the secret of doubt is if you doubt, you'll do without. It's true. You need to walk by faith, not by sight. Paul here says, whatever's true, noble, that's what you have to think on. And listen, as we've been talking about this week, you have the responsibility to change your mind. As a follower of Christ, I mean, we could do a year's worth of devotions on thinking in the mind. Because that's how much God's word talks about how important it is. It's our responsibility to change our minds. If you change your mind, God will do his job. He'll change your heart. 
You can't change your heart. You know, all this trying. Lord, I'm going to change my heart. I'm going to change my heart. God says, you can't change your heart. You can't. I do that. That's my job. You're trying to be the Holy Spirit again. I change your heart. But I'm not going to change your mind. You have to make a choice what you're going to think about. And if you change your mind, I'll change your heart. You know, somewhere this idea got into man's mind that we have no control over what we think on. And you know what's interesting about that lie from Satan? Is it's kind of one of the only things we have control over. A lot of the things that we think man thinks, mankind thinks they have control over, it's laughable. It's laughable. God's in control of those things. He's the one holding it all together. But he says, he says, I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I want you to think on what's true and lovely. I want you to take captive every thought and make it obedient to the mind of Christ. I'll end with this quote by Warren Wearsby. He says, listen, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head. You can't keep all these thoughts. You know, some people think, I'm going to get control of my mind, so I'm going to control everything around me. Can't do it. You can't keep a bird from flying over your head. He said, but you can keep it from making a nest in your hair. You can do that. You know, and are you keeping the lies of the enemy from nesting in your hair? Or are you feeding it? Are you feeding them? Keep putting little feathers and little sticks up there and fur and giving them little pieces of food, keeping them alive. Paul says, no, it's time to get rid of that nest in your hair. It's time to stop allowing the enemy to lie to you, to walk in what's true, what's noble, what's of good report. Meditate on these things. Meditate on God's word. Man, if you would do this, your life will be so blessed. You'll change. As Paul said in Acts 26, verse 2, when King Agrippa looked at him, couldn't figure out why he was so happy, even incarcerated, being brought before him almost as a spectacle. Paul says, I think myself happy. King Agrippa. Paul was even incarcerated thinking on the things of the Lord. So whatever state you're in today, Jesus, others, yourself, you'll have joy. Think on what's true. You'll be blessed. And Father, bless your people. Lord, I know we only looked at a few scriptures, but use your word. Holy Spirit, use your word in the lives of each one of your people to perform a spiritual surgery inside of them, to give them understanding wisdom, knowledge, Lord, about taking their thoughts captive, about the mind and how it affects their lives. And won't you just bless them with these things today? Won't you bless them today in all these areas in Jesus' name? Amen.